a video about DC coupling of transistors. And I will only show the most bare uh, properties of such a circuit. With all the flaws, etc., etc., but uh, perhaps it's interesting. And I have made here on this breadboard two uh, BC547 NPN transistors. That, mean, that means that they are going to conduct in the co uh, collector emitter lead when they have a positive voltage on their base. And this is, of course, a kind of Darlington. Um, this is only, say, the most bare circuit that you can uh, see and watch. And, of course, I know uh, the DC coupling of transistors is a special issue. Uh, they are sometimes coupled via a Zener diode or for a, via a normal diode. And then I mean here, this is by the way the circuit that I'm using now. Uh, this DC coupling is sometimes realized not by a wire like here, but via a diode or even a Zener diode. Anyway. The circuit is in fact very very simple. Two transistors. The emitter of the first transistor sends in its current uh, to the second transistor. The second transistor will amplify that so that we have in a certain way a kind of Darlington. And I've used here by purpose a microamperometer. That microamperometer is protected by two silicon diodes anti-parallel, so that the voltage here parallel to that microamperometer can never get too high, and especially the current must never get, must never get too high because, of course, such a microamperometer has a, a coil inside that moves in a magnetic field and that coil is wound with extremely thin wire and that wire can surely be uh, burned out when the current through such a microamperometer gets too high. Anyway, this is the, like I told, the bare circuit. What can you do with such a schematic? Well, at first, uh, say, <coughs> when you touch this electrode of the first transistor with your finger, on your finger there's always, say, a kind of AC voltage, AC current, though that current is extremely, extremely tiny, but anyway, uh, that makes that on the positive um, part, when you touch that base with your finger, the transistor starts to conduct. And here the amplification is 300 times and here also 300 times. It means in fact that your, say, the voltage with which you, uh, say, touch that base of that uh, first transistor is extremely amplified, up to, in this case, the 90,000 Hz factor. So, let me show that, how that works. And, well, it's important to tell that, at the moment, this voltage is flowing. There's no positive, there's no negative. That means that uh, on that base of that first transistor, there can be uh, positive or negative voltages. So that means that in this case, the microamperometer gives a kind of reading here. And that reading has also to do 
with the properties inside the two transistors that you have used and the resistor here. So this is more or less say the reading when there is no signal at the input of that Darlington. Here is that Darlington here, two transistors. And now I touch it with my finger here. Let's see what happens. You see an enormous current flowing in the emitter of the second uh, uh, transistor. That also means that even when uh, even say tiny charges here on this electrode can make that your microamperimeter reacts. Do it again. Not positive, not negative, but only say AC out of my body, out of my hands when I touch this base of the first transistor. So that's very interesting. You can use it, uh, this, uh, this circuit. That means that you can use this circuit for such a detector of tiny AC voltages. This is, by the way, the microparameter that I've used, ordered in China. It was a very, very good one with a quite big scale. It's 100 microampere. I ordered it uh, this year, anyway. Well, we know, of course, that uh, an NPN transistor here, most transistors are NPN transistors, will act on a positive voltage on their base. When you add, say, a positive voltage here, and I've, say, indicated that here, it's only an indication, by the way, um, I'm going to do that now in another way, but anyway, uh, when you add here a positive voltage or a positive current, of course, a transistor is a current amplifier, so a tiny, even the tiniest positive current will have an enormous effect here. A kind of waterfall effect regarding the current that uh, starts to flow here between the collector and the emitter of the second transistor. I will do that now. One finger now here on that positive, on the base of the first transistor. And now, here the, on the positive voltage supply, and now on the uh, base of that uh, first transistor, my body, my hand, acts as a kind of resistor. Let's see what happens. So, enormous current flowing now. And that's also, say, usable in all kinds. You can hear the click in the meter, by the way. That means that it is overloaded. Anyway, when I do that again, but now uh, connect the, uh, the base of that BC547B, that is an NPN transistor to the negative lead, you will see that the tiny current that's flowing here now drops to zero. Do that here. Well, that was not very convincing, but well, well, perhaps this is a good, this is a good demo. Here now, my the base of that first transistor is now purely connected to the to the negative lead. That means that the transistor does not um, have current in the collector emitter lead, but of course say my hand has a certain resistance and that's the reason I think that this voltage does not dro drop down purely to zero. But again, um, well, uh, what about say the use of such a simple circuit? Well, 
you can, of course, amplify DC currents and DC voltages with the help of this uh, circuit and that circuit is extremely sensitive like I have showed. So that also means that you can amplify currents in the microampere range, say 10 microampere, 5 microampere, even 1 microampere or 0.1 microampere. Uh, that will give an indication on the microamperimeter because the tiny current is extremely amplified. Of course, we can talk about the stability of such a circuit. Um, well, the temperature of the transistors, the temperatures of the resistors, etc. etc. When you want to do pre precise measurements, take that in account. But on the other hand, I'm more or less absolutely sure that you can use this circuit for precise measurements in your specific case where you want to use it say in a laboratory a, a universe laboratory any way that has to be say found out and the uh, Say the finding out of all these properties is not very difficult. So here are the conclusions. Uh, the circuit can be used to amplify a DC current. When you use a capacitor, by the way, here, thus here, here, when you connect here a capacitor, say of 100 nanofarad, 10 picofarad, uh, 50 nanofarad, and you touch that capacitor with your hand or finger, say in this situation, uh, the circuit will only react on AC. Um, so you can also use this as an AC amplifier. I don't want to deep dive into this because uh, the effects are different. Anyway, input capacitor means that you can use it as an AC amplifier. It's a Donington principle. Uh, I've already told um, you can uh, multiply the two uh, current amplification factors. Uh, the microparameter in the collector emitter lead, I've used it here in the, in the emitter lead. That was a good idea in this circuit. And well, uh, anti-parallel -par diodes, you can see here the two anti-parallel diodes that protect this beautiful and very sensitive microparameter that I surely not want to damage. Take your profit out of this circuit. It's very well usable. You can also connect here to the input here, say a plate, a capacitor plate, and when the say the charge on the capacitor plate changes, the microamperimeter will also show. A certain value. The pointer will surely move out, etc. Thanks for watching. Hope it was a little bit uh, inspiring to do experiments, test this circuit, use this circuit for all kinds of purposes.